welcome to the Daily Draw. Oh, I am so excited about this. I always try to put in something a little bit fun for midweek. Um, and we're a bit, bit confused, a lot, bit of argument in our house about how you pronounce this. But is it Yoshi? Is it Yoshi? Um, I'm learning Japanese, so I, I think it's a Japanese word, so I would say Yoshi. So we will see, whatever you, whatever you call it, uh, you're going to have so much fun drawing it. All you need is a pencil and a bit of paper. Um, if you want to use our watercolour packs, you'll be able to paint it at the end. But whatever you've got, just join in with us and uh, let's get drawing together. I'm very excited about this. Um, if you have a look at it, you can see already, if you have a look at the shapes, the key shape that is jumping out at you from this picture is that big circle. So how are we going to start this? Well, we're going to break it down into small shapes and then we're going to build it back up again. Let's have a little look. So if we start here, if I show you that, can you see that big circle there? We've got a circle here and then we've got that coming down. Let's take a look there. That's what we're going to begin with. So easy, yeah? Then we're going to build it up. Then we're going to add in the final details. Then we're going to paint it um, and I'm going to use watercolour pencils. So I'm going to come on to my watercolour pad. I'm going to do this on my watercolour pad today. I did that. That's what we did on Monday, James and the Giant Peach. And this paper is so nice and thick that you, can, that you can use it both sides. So let's make a start. Now that first circle there, if you see how it's quite big, isn't it? And we've got it quite near the top of the page. We only need a bit of room here. And when you're drawing, always think about where your picture's gonna go on the page. Are you gonna, it's nothing more annoying, is there? When you realize you've run out of room, you've not got room to put a hand in or something. So thinking about starting it, I think I'm gonna start mine about there. And I really want to think about how big that circle is. Now, if you're a bit unsure about drawing circles, you could get something to draw around. Um, I'm going to go down to about there. That's about right for my circle. And then over here, it is pretty much a perfect circle. And there, and that'll just help guide my pencil. Now you, in the ball, in your shoulder, you've got a ball there. So you can just use your shoulders to do the draw, to, to do a nice big confident circle. Or when you're drawing, holding the pencil really nice and loosely. I'm just going to do lots of small strokes there. If it goes wrong, look at that. Got my rubber. Nothing to panic about. Now, here we come around. People can get in a real flap about making mistakes. I think that you can never, n you should never ever worry about making mistakes. I make mistakes absolutely all the time with my drawing. That's how I keep learning. So that's, it's not a perfect circle, but it's good enough. I'm absolutely fine with that. Now I want to go back here. So if you think of that being the bottom, that being the side in that quarter, about halfway there, you see? That's the spot where we want these two circles to, jo to join. This is gonna end up being like the cheek of, of um, Yoshi. Okay, coming round to there. And then it's not quite a circle, this. If I bring that in, you can see it's almost like very subtle, but it's like a little egg. So it's a circle with a little bit extra on the bottom. So if I come around there like that, I'm going to take it down slightly to there. I am happy with that. So that's our first two shapes in. Now, you might think when you're drawing that the most important things, the eyes or the details that your eye goes automatically to, but actually it is those first basic shapes. Once you've got that in, everything's going to come. So we're going to now go with this line. That line's going to start from the bottom of that circle and it's going to go to about halfway there. So it's all about thinking where everything is in relation to everything else. Drawing's really very simple and it's quite logical. You just need to sit and think your way through it. There we go. That's that. Now I'm going to take this curve now to make his tummy. So I'm going to curve it out. I'm Keep my pencil, I can feel my pencil's gone, grip's gone too tight. Keep my pencil grip really nice and soft. And I'm going to curve it out and round. And then this one, I'm going to curve it out. And we're going to go down to about there. 
that is our first shapes. So if you can pause there and get these shapes in and remember, keep your pencil grip really nice and loose and make sure you've got a really good sized circle to start with for that fabulous big nose and then this smaller one for his cheek. Right, let's step, start building up the details now. So what we've, we've got, if we've got that and that and that, these three shapes here, what we're gonna do now is add in the eyes, start to bring in the mouth and the body and that arm there. So these two shapes here, where you can see the red line, when you pause it and you see it, the red line, they're the bits that we're gonna rub out. So every time you see a red line, they'll, they'll eventually rub out. We're not gonna do that straight away though because we want to get these lines in. So always thinking about where we're starting on the shape. So if that's the top of it, that's that corner. I'm gonna come up a bit from that. I'm gonna take it out at an angle up here. And here, again, that's going to come out at an angle as well. And then we're going to curve that round. So that's going to be it form the first bit of the head. And then here, I'm just going to bring that in there like that. So that's the second. So that was pretty easy peasy, wasn't it? Now this here, what we want to do, just past the bottom point here, about there, I am going to bring out it out into that shape. And then from this line here, this bit's quite important, I'm going to come up and over in a curve. And then from there, this is going to be end up being his mouth here, so we're going to take that down to there. And now we can rub these two lines out, so I'm going to rub that one out first. You see his head starting to take shape now, just from all those wonderful, simple shapes. Now here, we've got that line there, and I'm going to come just there, between the edge of that cheek and there. I'm going to take it out here into just a line there. This is going to form the arm. Then underneath, I'm going to put another Now, what I want you to think about sometimes, it's not just about the shapes, like the circle that we're doing, it's the shapes within the shapes. I hope that makes sense. So this is probably one of the most important things of, uh, of drawing. And when you start to see these shapes within the shapes, so what I want you to look at here is that shape there. Can you see? That shape in between there, that's the shape we're gonna draw now. So underneath there, coming down, and I'm gonna take that out so that shape there and it's the shape in between the arm and once I've got that to there I'm going to come down and then here this bit here this is going to be like the top of this little shell if I make mistakes because I don't know what things are called you'll have to excuse me I have got all my Yoshi knowledge from my 10 year old son Henry um, and only because I said to him, Henry, can you give me some Yoshi facts? He said that there are Yoshis that are different colours, so you don't have to feel like you could do, have to do this green. But also, I'm going to bring that in a little bit there. But also, you don't have to just do one. You can do loads of Yoshis once you've found out, once you've worked out how to draw it. All right, so I'm happy with that. That's the second stage, and you can see I've rubbed out these bits here as well. Right, so pause now and get those second shapes in. And remember to think about the shape within the shape. Right, now the fun bit. This is my favorite bit. When we when the picture really comes to life and it's usually with the eyes. As soon as you pop the eyes in, it comes to life. So we're gonna start from there. If I bring this in here, you can see what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put in the eyes here and then we'll start adding in these details. So coming in here, it's a little curve there, and up there, we're gonna take it in another curve, a much more defined curve, and then down. And the same here, it's gonna come up there. We've got these little kind of eyelids as well there, another one there. 
And then we've got ovals. So we've got a big oval here. With a bit of an outline there. And never forget the highlight. You always need the highlight. This one's actually adjoining there, so we can bring it round to there, pop in the highlight and pop in that bit there. So there's his eyes. Now then, these little bits here that come out, we've got one, two, and then there's actually another one tucked in there. And then we've already got that shell there. We're just gonna bring it in there because that's gonna help us when we come to color it. And we've got that coming around here. So I'm happy with that. There's another little line there. Now the only other details before we put the hands in is here on the nose, we've got these, these little marks there. Right, let's come onto the hands then. So we've already got this arm in here. And what we're gonna do is take it round to form a hand. So I'm gonna start with a thumb. So there's the thumb coming down and then round and the top. So that's it, thumb and a top line. Now here, let's take it up there. One, two, three. And there's that hand, right? So coming out here, same thing. Let's take it down about halfway there. A line there. And a line there. I'm gonna put in the thumb first again. And then think about that curve there. Still all about the shapes. One, two, and then his little pinky three. And round. That is our finished drawing. So now, what am I gonna do now? I am gonna take it, because this is in my watercolor pad, I'm gonna take my picture and I'm gonna use my watercolor pencils here. It's a very exciting way to paint, really lovely, um, easy way to paint because it's just so easy to set it all up. So I'm gonna paint this. If you did this on ordinary paper, paper that's more like, like that, grab your coloring pencils or your felt tips, whatever, and, um, and, and you can draw along with us. But keep watching because we're gonna, I'll show you all the different colors and also you might like seeing how the watercolor pencils work because they are so fab. I'm going to use uh, five colours here today in this with this painting. The main colour obviously is the green here because I've decided to do the uh, Yoshi original green one and then I've got an orange, a red and a blue. I'll only be using those a little bit and a black as well and they all come from the watercolour pencils that are in our pack that you can buy in our online shop. It's got 12 colours in but all, all the designs I, I'm going to be doing over the um, the next uh, few weeks are going to be from this pack with these 12 pencils. So that's, that's they're the colours I'm going to use. So let's start it off here. Now, with the watercolour pencils, the harder I press, the darker it's going to be. And the lighter I press, the lighter it's going to be. So it's pretty easy to work out. I'm going to start here by showing you how this works here with this fabulous big circle. And I'm going down quite hard around the edges because what I'm doing here is I'm putting the paint pigment onto the paper. And I want it to be much darker around the edges of the circle. And then on this side, I want it to be darker too. So I'm pressing quite hard there to get that. Now for the rest of it, I'd like it to be quite light. So I'm just pressing very lightly. Uh, right, let's see what happens when we um, put the brush in. So all I've got here is a tiny bit of water in the bottom of a jam jar, that's all I need. And my brush, and the brush comes with the pack as well. So the brush here, and I'm gonna start with the light bit. So you can see there, this is a really nice light green. If I started with the dark bit, it means every bit of it will be dark. But I want to get that bit for colored first. Then I'm gonna start bringing in the dark. Can you see how much darker that is? And as soon as my brush touches that, I can start to bring that in so it darkens everything. And every time the water touches the marks on the paper, it turns it to paint. 
Now, as I come around here, this bit here is going to be much darker. So if I come in here, you can see that how much darker that is. That's pure. It was the same colour, but it's just about how hard I pressed and how much pen of the pencil mark, the pigment from the pencil that I put on. Now, I don't want there to be a stripe in between that. So what I'm going to do is just wet my brush and have it so it's just got water on. And I'm going to touch it in. And can you see how that gets rid of the stripe? Because I don't really want that. It to look like I've got a stripe there. And I'm quite happy with that. So that's the way the nose has gone, just using that one colour. And I can do that, the same thing again here. I'm going to do the same thing now on the arm, this little arm here. I'm going to go around the edges. So I've put the paint pigment down there. And I'm just going to very lightly. Don't have to, it's not like colouring in neatly because it isn't colouring in. It's it, you're putting down the paint and then it's the brush really that does the colouring. So it's the brush, you've got to be more careful with where the brush is going. And all the time you're just gathering in those bits of paint to colour it. It dries really quickly. So as I'm doing this, the bit up on the nose is drying. So I can work my way around then. I'm going to come in here all the way down and actually I want to put a little line in there which will be his leg and then there and across and up to there. Now this bit here because it's in a kind of shadow I want that to be quite dark. Can you see I'm going around there? And the rest of it I'd like to be really light. I'm just putting very little in there Going around there on the hand, we'll go around and do exactly the same thing. I might put a little bit more because I think we'll need a little bit more of the paint pigment in. Here we go. So I'm going to start with the lighter bits, just like I did up there with the nose. Start with the if I start with the darker bits, there'll be loads of paint on the brush. But you can see you don't need much, do you, to paint the whole thing? So that's that arm done. If I come here, I'm going to do the front of the tummy first because I want that nice and light. And then I'll go into this shady bit that I want to be much darker. There we go, you can see that. It's got much darker coming in. All right, just one last bit of green. There's a lot of green on this one. One last bit of green here, and that is up and around the eyes down to there. And I'll go around the eyes like that. I want it to be very dark there, like it's a for that bit that we'd put in as a kind of eyelid. And I'll put some, and I want it to be darker there and lighter there. Here we go. Let's do the light bit first. And then that's the dark bit. That is the green done. So let's go on to the red. I want to put this mouth in here. So I'm going to take that up to there like that. this mouth. And actually I'd quite like this to be a bit darker on the inside so the way to darken it here with this is I'm going to put a bit of the black pencil just there. I'll show you how, what that does. So if I start by putting my brush first on the red, if I put it on the black first everything will be black. So I've got that red bit and can you see as it goes into the black what's happening? It's really darkening it. That's exactly the effect I wanted. So it looks like there's a little shadow underneath. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour that bit red. And we've got a little bit under here as well. And the red really stands out against the green. And there's a reason for that. We do this in the Little Art School course uh, when we start doing the levels. It's called complementary colours. And that's why red and green go so brilliantly together. 
Okay, and then I'm going to finish these bits here with my orange. And I want this to be really bright. So can you see I'm pressing down pretty hard there? Very different to how I did the green. And that said that it's a really lovely bright colour. There we go. One, two, three. Okay, let's come in now and do the eyes. Now, it's really important that you draw around that little highlight. Let's keep that. And I'm pressing very hard to get this lovely bright blue. And I'm using my dark blue from my box here for this. I'll just turn that with a little bit. And all we've got left to do is a little bit of the black. So I'm gonna use my black here to sort of draw around, but there's more to it than that. I also want to get a bit of a shadow from it. I'll show you on here. So here on the tummy, if I draw around like that with my black, I'm not gonna do anything else except get my brush, make sure it's really clean that there's none of that blue on. And watch as I just touch the edges. Can you see how it brings that paint in just a little? It kind of gives us that little bit of gray as if it's a shadow. And to avoid that being sort of a line, if I just take my brush with nothing on it, just water, and I take the edge out, it softens the edge right up there. I'm gonna do exactly the same around here as well. Give it a bit of a shadow. Then go in, just with water, and soften it there. I'm happy with that. Now, I also want to come up around here and I'm going to draw an edge there and there and then coming around here I want an edge in here and you can if you like you can draw around these orange bits as well to make them stand out even more and we've only got a couple of bits left to finish it here and then what really brings them to life is when we put in these eyes here. So what we want is make sure that blue's dry. Mine's not quite dry. I'm gonna go around the edge there, around the edge there. And that's it. That is my Yoshi. Now you could do loads of these in lots and lots and lots of different colours um, but I hope you've really enjoyed it. Hope you really enjoyed that. I had so much fun with that. I've got to say this is uh, this is far too much fun to be having in a working day for me. But um, what we would really, really like from you is for you to show us your picture. So get mum or dad or anybody that you can to take a picture of it and pop it onto our Facebook page or our Instagram page or our Twitter page. We're very social. Or you could put it in the comments underneath the YouTube video. But we would really, really love uh, to see your pictures. It really makes it so worthwhile for us because we know that you're loving it and we can get to see how you're doing. Now, tomorrow, we've got something a little bit different. On Thursdays during the last lockdown, Elizabeth, who is my daughter and works for the Little Art School, presented a very special um, once a week daily draw, which was draw with the grandparents. We know at the moment with, with lockdown that we're all really missing our families and drawing together is a wonderful way um, to connect with people. And um, we know last time we had one of my favorite stories we heard was from a family who the parents were in Germany and um, the children were here in Scotland and they drew together every Thursday. And we really hope that you can connect with your family tomorrow and draw together with Elizabeth. She's got the cutest little uh, winter scene of uh, hats and mittens for you. So we will see you for the daily draw with the grandparents tomorrow. Mm -hmm.